Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my Logic Pro 11 MIDI Essentials course. In this video, we're gonna dive into beat making with Drum Machine Designer. I'm also gonna show you a couple of really cool recording features in Logic for MIDI, including MIDI Merge and Input Quantization. So to follow along with this tutorial, you do not have to have great keyboarding skills and you really only need like minimal music theory knowledge. And starting with the next video, we're gonna talk about a bunch of different ways to record MIDI and get your ideas into Logic. But here I wanna start simple with making a beat, adding a bass line and a simple chord progression. So the first thing I wanna talk about is MIDI Merge. What MIDI Merge does is it allows you to play in your parts one at a time. This is especially helpful when building drum beats because you could play in the kick drum, then play in the snare drum, and then play in the hi-hat and cymbals. And you can do this in multiple passes. So you don't have to do everything all at once. To do this, go up to Logic Pro, Settings, and then go down to Recording. And then from here, you're gonna check overlapping track recordings for MIDI, and you wanna check out Cycle Off and Cycle On. You wanna make sure that both of these are set to merge. And what this means is that if you have an overlapping MIDI recording, Logic will automatically combine your old recording and your new recording as one new MIDI region. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Analog Circuits DMD kit here. And one of the things I wanna do is I wanna make sure that all of the kit pieces line up with the beat pads on my MIDI controller because that's the way I'm going to enter in each of my notes. Now, typically beat pads are mapped chromatically, so they typically start on C1. But one of the things you'll see here is that the pads don't line up with the pads on my MIDI controller. To fix this, you're going to click here and then go down to reorder pads chromatically. And so that will reorder the pads starting on C1 and put them in chromatic order. So now all of the pads match up. This should work for any launch pad device or other device with beat pads. Now, if you don't have beat pads, you can always play this on your MIDI controller. C1 is gonna be the kick drum. And then you can use the octave keys on your MIDI controller to shift up all of those drums more toward the middle of your keyboard if you like. Another thing you may wanna check is what octave you're using for middle C. Traditionally, middle C is C4, but by default in Logic, middle C is C3. To change this, you can go up to Logic Pro, Settings, and then go down to View. And then here under the General tab, under Displays, you'll see Display Middle C as C3. That's the Yamaha standard. If you go to C4, that's the Roland standard. And if you learned music theory in college or in high school, you probably learned that middle C is typically referred to as C4. However, it's very common in the music production world and in the DAW world to refer to middle C as C3. The octave number changes, but the frequency of the note doesn't actually change. So just know that throughout this entire course, I'm going to be referring to middle C as C3. Now, one other thing we wanna do before we record in drums is we want to set an input quantization value. What quantization does is it corrects any timing inconsistencies in your performance. So for example, if you're a little before the beat or a little behind the beat, quantization can correct those notes immediately after you record them in using input quantization. To set up input quantization, just click on the background somewhere just to make sure nothing is selected. And then come over here to the region inspector and set your quantize value to the musical value that you want to play in. And you typically wanna use like the fastest musical value that you're going to play in. For me, for this example, it's going to be an eighth note. So I'm gonna select an eighth note. And what that means is all notes I play in will automatically be quantized to an eighth note. So let's use MIDI merge along with input quantize to build our beat kit piece by kit piece, starting with the kick drum.
Now, you've probably noticed that I started my recording at bar two. I personally like to do that just to leave myself a little bit of buffer time before the music comes in. So I usually start my songs at bar two. But another way to do this is you can click here and drag to the left and you can actually create a zero bar. So you could start your recording right at bar one this way. And if I double click on the MIDI region, you'll see that all of those notes are snapped perfectly to the grid because of that input quantize. So let's go ahead and just trim this up. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this right on bar one and we'll take advantage of our zero bar. Another thing you can do is you can use the cycle range to set a range for your recording if you don't like dealing with the count in, which sometimes I don't like. So I'm gonna turn off the count in and then I'm just gonna set my cycle range to be one bar before and one bar after my recording. And so next I'll add in my snare and some claps. And these are gonna be played in at the same time. Okay, and you can see all of those notes have also been quantized to the grid. Another way to go about this is you can use the cycle range to loop record or cycle record. So you can do each layer one after the other without stopping. Let's actually start over and I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna hit record once and then I'm gonna play in my kick, my snare and clap, and then I'm gonna play in some cymbals and some hi-hats. And then if you want to layer in an additional layer, maybe a clave or something, you can do that too. And I added in an open hi-hat there, but I think I got it in the wrong place. So let's go into our piano roll editor here. There's that uh, open hi-hat. Let's actually pull this forward to be right on the fourth beat. And then let's get rid of this closed hi-hat here as well. And so let's click on that MIDI region, hit Command U to set the cycle range around it and give it a listen. And one of the really helpful things about using Drum Machine Designer in the piano roll is each of the kit pieces are listed here. Their actual names are listed rather than just referring to them as you know the notes or the pitches on the keyboard. Let's select the wood block here. I think I called it a clave before. And let's uh, lower the velocity a bit just so it's not so loud. And maybe let's lower it down even a little bit more than that. Okay, so let's move on to our synth pad here. Once again, I'm gonna set my cycle range around the recording area. And there we go. I did play one wrong note there. And there it is. So I'll just select that note and delete it. Now, the reason why I turned off input quantize here is I wanted to show you a feature called MIDI chase. When you have notes that are slightly ahead of where the playhead is, what will happen is those notes won't play back because the playback is not getting a note on message. Right, so the beginning of the note is your note on message, the end of the note is your note off message. I would have to put the playhead before those notes in order for the playhead to latch on to that note on message. So this creates a problem when you are placing the playhead on a bar line and you have notes that are slightly ahead of the grid. 
because you won't be able to hear them. But there is a way around this, and it's called MIDI Chase. So unfortunately, this is a project by project setting. It's not a global setting, so you'll have to set this in every project you work on. So to find this, you're gonna go up to File, Project Settings, MIDI. And then from here, you're gonna go to Chase, and you wanna make sure to turn on Notes. You want to chase your MIDI notes. And what this means is no matter where you place the playhead in a note or a chord, you'll still get that note on message. So the playhead doesn't have to be placed before the note on in order to hear the note or chord. It can be placed anywhere. So that's MIDI Chase, another really helpful feature to keep in mind. But I'm going to go ahead and just quantize these notes to a whole note since they're just basic whole note chords. So I'll hit Command A to select all here in the piano roll editor. And for my time quantize, I'll set this to 1-1, one, one, which is a whole note. Let me show you a cool editing trick to get rid of these gaps between the chords. If you hit Command A to select all, then press Shift Backslash. This will trim the end of those notes to be right up against the next note. It does leave like a very slight gap between them, but it gets rid of those big gaps that we had earlier. And one last editing thing I wanna do here is I want to click on this note and let's raise the velocity a bit because the velocity on that one note was a little lower than the others. Okay, let's add in a really basic bass line. It's gonna follow those exact same chords from before. Okay, next up, let's make our bass line a little bit more interesting by adding an arpeggiator to it. So I'm gonna select that track. I'm gonna come over here to the inspector and go to the MIDI effects and load up the arpeggiator. Let's go with an eighth note for the rate and let's make the octave range two. And then I'll just play this back and I'll play around with the four different variations and the note order and I'll settle on the one I think sounds best. Now, some of the transitions between the notes are a little weird. And that's probably because we have overlapping notes, which can cause the arpeggiator to kind of get off sync. So like before, we're going to use a shortcut to edit the gaps in between the notes. So this time we're just going to press backslash and that'll get rid of any note overlaps. But then I'm going to press uh, shift backslash to do that same function as before to get rid of any gaps. So the gaps between the notes should be normalized at this point. Okay, so I've built out a really basic beat and a chord progression and a bass line. Over the next several videos, we're gonna get into MIDI recording techniques, including using take folders, using free tempo recording, flashback capture, auto punch and replace. There's a lot of stuff to go over when it comes to MIDI input methods. And we're gonna be covering a lot of that throughout this course. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.